Do you wish to tower over your opponents? Would you like to turn them into human locomotors? Is fashion your passion? Well boy, do I have a video for you guys, because today I present to you how to Lawbringer. Now, as a Red 53 Lawbringer, I've been able to gather quite a lot of information, as well as matchup experience over this character. I know of his chains, punishes and frame data, and possess a good understanding of his matchups and capabilities. Even though Lawbringer is generally considered as a low tier character with a very basic game plan, he actually possesses a lot of hidden potential that many players don't seem to take advantage of or simply don't know about. So today I will be teaching you guys everything you need to know. Let's get right into the video. Okay, so the first part of the tutorial will consist on analyzing the character's strengths as well as his weaknesses. To start off, Lawbringer has a health pool of 140 hit points. This is second highest only behind Hitokiri's 145 and equal to Shugoki's and Warlord. He also possesses one of, if not the best punish game in the game. Okay, so out of a heavy parry, Lowbringer has several options. He can either light you for 12 damage and follow it up with another light or heavy. Pike an opponent that guarantees a 24 damage top heavy that can be chained into any other move if wall splatted. zone for a total of 15 damage and he can also do a 24 damage unblockable top heavy although this one isn't guaranteed and is mainly used for mix-up purposes as for light parries he can pike and follow up with the same moves mentioned earlier and can also throw the same unblockable top heavy but instead this one is actually guaranteed and can be follow up by a 6 damage light attack he can also shove after the top heavy but this isn't guaranteed it is also vital to mention that every single one of those moves stun and drain stamina, except for the zone. Out of an out of stamina forward throw, Lorbringer gets a guaranteed side heavy followed up by a top heavy and the light, dealing a total of 66 damage. Out of an out of stamina parry, he gets a delayed light attack followed up by a top heavy and another light attack, dealing a total of 54 damage. He can also do the unblockable top heavy followed by the 6 damage light in case you don't have enough stamina for the max punish. You can also mix these up to chain into more yet non-guaranteed damage. For example, after an out of stamina throw, you can throw 2 top heavies and follow it up with the chain unblockable, dealing a total of 82 damage. Or you can feint it into a guard break or parry. The same applies for the out of stamina parry. As we can see, Lowbringer has an extraordinary damage output and can trade pretty efficiently with his high HP pool. So this brings the question, why is Lowbringer low tier? Well, here is where all the other aspects I mentioned earlier come into play. First of all, let's talk about his frame data. Now, when I say frame data, I refer to the speed of a character's move. Lowbringer's moves are notoriously known for being pretty slow. His light, heavy, and neutral shove are way slower than your average characters, which means that they can get interrupted and struggles opening. This also refers to his chain heavies and shove, which are very obvious and can be easily reacted to. Thankfully, Lowbringer can't get light selected out of his chains as long as you don't use the top heavy, which, in most cases, is unadvisable. And speaking of chains, Lowbringer actually offers very solid mix-ups. After a light, heavy, or shove, Lowbringer can follow up with a heavy attack, which can be chained into another unblockable heavy, shove, or light attack. His neutral heavy can also chain into a light or shove, and if you want to be even less predictable, you can feint your attacks into guard breaks or long arms, as well as into another light, zone, or heavy attack. For those who are more experienced, you can also lock out and get a sneaky pike or timed zone. When it comes to tech, I'd like to show you guys a few ways you can use Lowbringer's tools in order to open your opponents more efficiently as well as bait them and punish them. The first technique I'd like to explore with you guys is the time zone I mentioned earlier. As you guys may know, Lowbringer's zone hitbox starts diagonally behind him and moves forward from his right. Generally, this move is pretty slow and easy to parry, but if you lock out and align Lowbringer correctly, you can make the hitbox of the zone hit the opponent almost instantly or delay it for mix-up purposes. Even though this is useful, it's important to understand that this is a pretty unsafe move and can very easily be punished, so make sure to use it moderately and with calculated risk. The next tips will help you open your opponents more easily. 
As I mentioned earlier, Lowbringer can pike opponents on lock. If you hit a wall, this will guarantee you a free side heavy and even a top heavy depending on the character. I will try and make a follow up video to show in which characters you can land the top heavy and which not. Also, since Lowbringer's attacks have a pretty long range, you can take advantage of this and try and time them in order to land a sneaky hit on your opponents and follow up. Generally, my go-to is to do a backstep heavy or light attack and chain it into another heavy from any direction or a bash. If you're lucky, your opponent might get caught off guard or interrupted from one of his attacks and take the hit, but more often than not, the safest bet is to feint these and fish for a guard break or punish them for trying to parry or light select. Another nice mix-up is to feint into a long arm, since it will catch opponents trying to dodge early or trade with you. Using long arm in neutral is also pretty good, since if you time it correctly, you can catch an opponent mid-opener like a berserker or a raider. I personally recommend trying to apply all of these as often as you can, since it makes Lowbringer's main flow, not being able to open, less inconvenient and makes your mix-ups even less predictable. And last but not least, let's talk about Lowbringer's matchups. Unfortunately for him, Lowbringer has slowly been power grabbed by most characters. Nowadays, most characters own a fast bash, hyper armor, and dodge attacks with iframes. Hence, Lowbringer generally has losing or even matchups against most characters. Let's start with the good matchups. Generally, Lowbringer performs well against characters that don't have a good bash mix-up or hyper armor. For this reason, characters such as Peacekeeper, Aramusha, Kyoshin, Nabushi, Valkyrie, Shaolin, Zanu, and Noxia perform bad against Lowbringer. The reason Lowbringer does well against these characters is because these don't really have very good options to open him up or interrupt him. This leads to characters depending on light and heavy attacks in order to open or attack Lowbringer, which is what he is fishing for in order to parry punish them. This strength is increased by the fact that he has significantly more HP than them and can afford to trade with them successfully. Lowbringer's equal matchups are Griffin, Lowbringer, Highlander, Jormungandr, Kensei, Orochi, Tiandi, Shugoki, and Centurion. <clears throat> These characters are more on par, and if optimally played can give you some trouble. This is mainly due to their higher HP pools, hyper armor, or better bash follow-ups. But even then, Lowbringer can easily dispatch of them when effectively traded. And as for his bad matchups, we have Warden, Gladiator, Conqueror, Warmonger, Black Prior, Raider, Warlord, Shaman, Berserker, Hitokiri, Shinobi, Hyang Hyung, Magi, and Pirate. And the reason these characters give Lowbringer such a bad time is because they possess many tools that allow them to interrupt Lowbringer or counter his playstyle. Characteristics such as hyper armor, a vast quantity of unblockables, very good bashes and fast lights that can interrupt your mix-ups or openings, to name a few, completely destroy this character. Obviously, it's important to mention that these matchups are just based on paper, and there will be players that might do well even against the bad matchups due to experience or character knowledge. I personally perform pretty well against raiders and shinobis, but in the end, this is an outlier. Long story short, if you're looking for a technical character with a good punish game, decent mix-ups, and top-tier fashion, then you should definitely try Lawbringer. Anyway, this is the end of the video. If you guys like this format, please let me know in the comments since these videos require a lot of effort to make. If you do, I'll happily make a follow-up video based on the character that you guys chose in the comments. Anyway, have a good one.